Hello and welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 454. Fresh from pouring some mayo down the sink in honor of Cinco de Mayo 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle. I'm Mo. I'm Kelly. I'm Adriel. (laughs) Happy Cinco de Mayo. I wasn't wasn't expecting that. (laughs) That was good. (laughs) Bravo, Kyle. Where is it going with this? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I see that. I was trying to get uh, Revenge of the Fifth in there, too, but I figured that was just a little bit too much. (laughs) It's good, too. Yeah, we can do that, too. And then also, there's the we can all speak Dutch if we want to. There's Liberation of Poland today on May 5th. What else is happening on May 5th? Uh, My my Dutch is a little rusty. Mm -hmm. Mine's not. (laughs) Mine's non-existent. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All I know is Dutch rudder. (laughs) (laughs) So, hey everybody! Hello. Hey. Good to see y'all. Yeah. Good to see everyone too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's Brandon's go asking how many Brent twos did everyone order today? Uh, no. no. I stared. No. I stared at it so long, but I didn't do it. I no. walked away. I left. You no. still got the window open, right? In many brow in uh, many uh, devices, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in all devices, yes. Oh, it's so oh. pretty. So, so pretty. Mm. It does look nice. I, I like it. Oh. I would love to try it. I, do you need to buy one so that try it? <laughs> so you guys can review it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but let's right. get what in into what we did with guns. What we did with guns is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearm retailer. And this week, I had chose to highlight they have the Beretta 686 Silver Pigeon and figured I'd do that because they have I'd call Beretta Days basically you oh, get yeah. $100 yeah. back on any new over under Beretta until May 12th it's good fit for the main topic too yeah good. yeah good clay guns right yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and I think what was that it was retailing the just under three grand well, that fits the topic perfectly because we were talking about guns that were three grand. I think I would get the brand two. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that you can use that for a sporting clays or field sporting. It's, it's it's try hard enough, you can. <laughs> Choose my three gun A five. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Uh, well, Adriel, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. So. Um... This week, I've been drywalling, mudding, painting, drop ceilinging some more. Uh, I've got, I picked up some more LED strips because my last ones weren't putting enough po- out, out enough power. Uh, yeah. These ones are now putting out enough power. I've also got, uh, it's it's too much for my uh, for my dials to take, but I've got, I got one over top that's uh, mm, got some heat on it. Ooh, um, that looks, that looks uh, good though. It'll it'll cut out because the it's too much power for the dial oh. handle. After a while, it'll it'll dim to half and it'll just stop oh. working because it's just okay. it's too much power. So yeah, really, <laughs> I should use a relay. <laughs> I should relay all these things because I got this control panel over here, which I wear. I want it, but all the actions happening like other places. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I should if relay you're a, all if this. If you're stuff. on a podcast, we would kind of want to really see the guns behind you instead of you being in a dark cave. <laughs> well, it is a dark cave right now. I got red today and I got blue, a strip of red, strip of blue. So I want to do like some Sweet. differential colors in the background. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know where or how. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I got some more of that stuff. Um, published some more articles, so I've been like yes, cranking out the articles, yeah, getting uh, a bunch of those out there. Uh, did a maple seed shoot boss call, uh, yeah. which was uh, which was good. Um, we've got Battle of Alberta coming up on uh, June. Mm, we don't know if we'll have the range, so that might get bumped. So, um, if uh, if Battle of Alberta gets bumped, I'll probably do something else for National Range Day. Maybe I'll yeah. uh, go do something at uh, Shirt Park or I don't know something. Mm-hmm. Not sure right now. Um, I'm prepping up this weekend. We're uh, heading out to BTSA Calgary for a Maple Seed weekend. And uh, it's looking like it's going to be chilling in the morning. Like zero, minus one, raining, snowing. Depends what it decides to do. A little bit Um, of everything. 
it'll warm up to a balmy 10 during the day. So eh, it should be fine, right? It should be fine. And uh, let's see. Right now, I'm working on an article about the uh, Oryx stock. And I got okay. a couple of notes on that. A um, couple of things that I am going to need to do to this. Now, I, I was like, oh, man, you'd be killer if they had an Arca rail for this thing. Uh, I know Margin at uh, uh, Metalworks has those. Yep. But then I went on the Oryx website and they have them there. They have them on the, mm -hmm. <laughs> on the Oryx website. I'm like, oh, you know, this this butt stock, like it's, it's just got Allen keys to, uh, yeah. uh, to adjust to it. The, uh, I'm like, the oh, knobs would be great. Guess what they have at Oryx? They have the knobs. <laughs> so you just need to buy the knobs. Seriously. It's like yeah, someone yeah, thought of it already. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Someone, someone thought about this stuff. Um, so I need both of those. Okay. And uh, because I'm going to be taking this out for Maple this weekend, I'm going to put an M-Lock uh, cutie sling yeah. there and there. The push button cutie is the one I like. Yeah. So that's the one I'm, yeah. I'm going to set it up for. Okay. Um, yeah, cool stock. I, I actually cool. tried the uh, the Magpul spacers in here. And with no. a Dremel, they'd work. They don't work quite <laughs> off the factory. With a Dremel, they'll work. It don't. It won't look very good. It won't like. It won't be nice and flush with it. But it'll fit. Do they have more spacers on the uh, website? They have more spacers on the website. We'll just go and get more spacers on the website. <laughs> <laughs> oh I have gosh. so many of the Magpul ones sitting next to me. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I'll change out this mag release because no. it's it, it's not bad. I can still get it. I can I still think. get it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change that out. Um. This thing clamps, eh? It clamps on the rear of the receiver. Boop, boop, mm -hmm. Clamps the receiver down so it doesn't get that yeah. tilt. Uh, the Magpul Hunter that I had this rifle in, uh, it had a little bit of a wobble at the at the back of the gun, um, just where it like hooks into the stock there. Uh, well, it can't on this because <laughs> the aluminum's like clamped onto the receiver. It can't go anywhere. Um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll uh, I'll have that out this weekend in case anyone needs a loner rifle. Sweet. Um, yeah, it's gonna be uh, Tom and I out uh, out for that one. For the, mm. That's a that's a double header. All, all our events are like all sold out. I think I've talked about this before on the show, but like everything's yeah. sold out everywhere. Yeah, Mine's need to add some me. more. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. You have to catch uh, up. I need to email out the Grand Prairie one. Yeah. You guys have had that one long enough. I'm gonna email that yeah. one out. We're gonna get some more people. We're gonna in sell there. that one out too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um. And then um, a, a very important uh, home reno thing that I've been working on is um, I sold my safe that had all the stickers on it because why well, I don't need safes anymore. I got a, a gun room that's like specifically built and designed as a gun room. Uh, so I've been adding stickers to the door. So uh, and patches. <laughs> and patches. I got I got, uh, I got some like Velcro going down the middle, and I got all my patches sweet. over there because I don't really have a lot of clothing that like will take a patch. Mm. So um, yeah, door. Put them all up on the door. They look good. I want to. I want to display them, and uh, and that's where I'm going to choose to display them. I, I guess I could put them. It. Some some people put them on like the headliner in their vehicle, and uh, I could do that too. But they always fall down, and I'd yeah. have to like I don't know, stitch something in there. I'm not doing that for a 2003 Dodge Caravan. So <laughs> <laughs> can't yeah. imagine. Can't imagine. No. So I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm just setting up. I think that by next week I'll probably have the lighting and the ceiling thing situated because mm -hmm. I. I just need to sand that guy a little bit more, paint it, and then I can start putting up the brackets and T-bar and whatnot and should be good to go. So uh, I think I think that's uh, it for me. What about you, Kyle? Oh, well, I shot the Cabin Fever Classic this weekend, and there was good targets as well. And yeah, oh. there's lots of good, great people there. We actually had... 62 registered shooters on Saturday, which is cool. great. They like, good numbers, a lot of new people, new locals, new people who traveled. So it's looking good for the year that there's a lot of newer people getting into it. Good. Uh, I was able to clear my first station ever in a registered match. So cool. That, I mean, I shot every target on that station and then went on to clear two more stations throughout the weekend so and ended up basically shooting the best registered match i've ever shot so, oh nice awesome good yeah, for you very very how did, you, how did you do it was it like practice was it like you're in the right mind space not hung over in the morning like what's your secret 
Um, actually, I wasn't hungover, surprisingly enough. Well, that's that's a secret then, right there. <laughs> but I was sore after Saturday, because I, I ended up only shooting half of the Canadian field sporting because it turned out I needed to shoot the first half of it on Friday, and I was just too busy. I couldn't get out there to, to actually go shoot. But I did shoot the second half of it on Sunday, just or on Saturday, just to check it out, along with the true pair game and then the 120 targets. So by because I haven't been out shooting sporting clays, so it's not practice either. I I don't know what it was, but I was sore. So Sunday, all Sunday was it was sore, but still I only dropped one bird from what I did on Saturday on Sunday. So. So yeah, uh, mindset. Yeah, I was definitely in a better mindset. I found I was thinking about where my gun needed to be, and some people, like guys trying to help me out at the club, would give me crap because while well, you see your barrel and where the way they're trying to teach me is like when is just to follow the bird, match the speed of the bird. You're not measuring lead or anything, but I'm finding it's helping me to do a little bit of both thinking about my position of the barrel and then also trying to match the speed and, and at least get my gun moving. Yeah. And it, it helped me this weekend. So know what your leads are. Yeah. I'm yes. trying not to measure, but at least, yeah. Okay. I need to give that a little bit more or something. Yeah. yeah. Be realistic with your leads as well. Yeah. What I mean by that is knowing what actually, whether it's you need to be two feet or whatever know what actually two feet looks like yeah for sure yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but so yeah i did good on the register portion the true pair game was just basically a cash game they did lewis class and that was the last thing we shot on saturday and i was done and did not do good at that whatsoever no. that one but that it was fun um i did renew my ipsic membership Yay, so, good for you. Start looking at Ipsic matches. I think I'm going to try for Canada Day long weekend. There's a okay. match in Bonneville, three-day match. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try for that. And I registered. I actually found on the Ipsic uh, forum, but there's a practical shotgun match down in Brooks on May 28th. So I'm going to go down and shoot that. I registered for that. and Nice. Drive down to Brooks and check that out good to see someone else trying to get that going here and yeah other than that like i found some interesting rounds on the range oh yeah so those are yeah yeah those the are first yeah taser rounds yeah yep. uh, hmm. yeah they're they're not even cut down it looks like they roll it in and yeah. crimp it into this plastic piece and it's a nine mil the nine mil cartridge yeah. and yeah, well, I see. Yeah, yeah you've see seen them. them before, Kelly. I don't know if Adriel or Mo have. <laughs> I have not. I have I not. see them all the time. <laughs> I have not. Just littered all over your workstation at work. Yeah, yeah. that's the practical joke in in the jail system. Just <laughs> yeah. Uh, pay attention. <laughs> Taser, taser, taser. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> it's taser time. <laughs> no. Anyways. No? And I I put some patches up too, but I put them in my truck on the headliner. Oh, you did, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's where they always go. I get up there and give them a good wiggle with the fist, and I find they don't fall down. <laughs> Maybe I should be trying uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I drive a company car, so I don't think they would appreciate it if I did that. Would they inspect it every week? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Your headliners are always so fuzzy. What are you doing, Mo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The head's bristly. Just go in there. There you go, Adriel. Just go in there with a wire brush and get them fuzzed up a bit. Mm, that would work. <laughs> I don't care about that vehicle, so I will do it. No. Well, <laughs> I've got, I've got duplicates. Vehicles every once in a while. <laughs> Anyways. But that is it for me. How about you, Kelly? Uh, so I did do a couple of things. I, uh, all right. So the She Shoots uh, podcast has been released. So we have uh, 
Lauren Stroud that's coming on. And also, we're also going to be joined by Christine Tubb. If you don't know who she is, check her out on Facebook. And uh, her father is actually called The Legend. And there's a reason why as well. So, but uh, so the She Shoots podcast is going to be on Tuesday at uh, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So, this Tuesday, May 10th. Uh, check it out. Uh, these ladies both uh, shoot out. Uh, well, it's the extreme long distance. So check it out. Join us. It'll be fun. Uh, so the other thing that we've done is, or I've done, remember I was telling you about the Ipsic match I was going to be signing up for and all that. Well, I shot it. First one. You said you were going to win, I think, is what you no, said. No, I did yeah. not say that. But so you, sure everyone, that too. everyone else sucks. I'm going to win. I got this in the no. bag. Yeah, well, no, it, <laughs> it uh, was not a good start to the year. Just have to let you know. So on the first stage, I was not the first one to shoot. I was the second one to shoot on the first stage. And uh, there was some some uh, poppers. Uh, so I got to reshoot because um, it uh, there was an uh, equipment failure. It did not. The popper didn't actually come down. So. Um, it wouldn't come down either. So we had actually problems with uh, that stage uh, throughout the weekend. So, But specifically, I, I was able to do a reshoot. So that just screwed me right up. So the next stage I went to, uh, it was, so again, remember I had to do a reshoot. So I did it right then and there. What I did was I actually took the magazine out and put it in behind me. And then I started with the new fresh mag. And guess what? When I went oh, to the no. next stage and I started oh. the stage, guess which magazine I used? The half yeah. full one. <laughs> half full yeah. one. So the next yeah. stage was you engage the first three targets with two shots. You do a mag change and you engage the next uh, two, uh, three targets with uh, two shots. Yeah. So anyways, so bang, <laughs> bang, 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 click. <laughs> yeah, right. did a mag change bang bang another mag change bang 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 anyways it was a good stage and i did it quickly but i had to do two mag changes as opposed to one mag change yeah. uh so and then i went to the next stage and it was strong hand only guess what yeah so for the first uh two shots uh, yeah i got Jeez. two procedurals <laughs> and i went <laughs> and then I shot strong hand only. And then on the next stage, I cleared it and I did really well and no mistakes. So I went and did a high five with everybody. And after that, it was fine. But it was just, it wasn't a good start mm. to the, it was not a good start to the, to the year. So that does sound want, rough. Yeah. I want to kind of do it all over again, but I wasn't allowed to. Um, but uh, so what happened was I shot on Friday and shot with uh, my peeps and then Saturday I worked all day Saturday doing stats and timekeeping and everything and then on Sunday I came back on the morning and uh, did uh, stats as well and as part of it um, yeah I'm looking to actually I think I'm going to do the RO course when it's available so I want to become an IPSC RO so it'll be fun um, but and then we were done we were done really early on uh, Sunday. So they were also running a new uh, shooter orientation for my club. So I went over there and I said, do you need any help? And they said, sure, we do. So I was actually putting them through their places, paces too for the new uh, the, uh, members orientation. So I helped there too. And then, uh, yeah, so other did things I did was... Them about like uh, staging mags and... Yes. The importance of full mags and that kind of thing. Yeah. So the really the really funny piece was there was a couple of uh, uh, new shooters that just did their black badge course. And uh, and I said to them, here, this is what you do not do. Everything that I just did, that's not what you do. Okay. This is <laughs> anyways, they appreciated that. So Monday, yeah, I did a um, maple seed call with uh, Adriel, and then also uh, I sent in some dates. So it looks like I'm going to be doing another the next club level uh, ATT course that we're going to be doing here in June. So our club continues to do the club level ATT course, and so they actually want me to teach it. So I'm taking on something new. Isn't that awesome? Anyways, <laughs> you didn't you didn't have enough to do. So yeah. 
And so uh, I'm going to be helping out with that or doing it now, apparently for the next one. So I'm going to be doing that mid June and then skeet night. Kelly and I've been trying to get out to skeet and it just been it's yesterday was pouring. So we did not go. So we're hoping it will start up again next, next Wednesday, but yeah, it needs to stop raining. The other thing that's happening is one, we were able to get the trailer from the back of the barn. So the maple seed trailer that was buried in water. Anyways, we were able to get it out, but I have a maple seed this weekend at lower Trent Valley and I'm super excited about it. Uh, so we'll be able to take the, the trailer as well and have everything uh so i'm prepping for this weekend and oh yeah adriel it's going to be 18 degrees and partially sunny partially cloudy and beautiful no nice rain no snow yeah yeah it's, it's well it's 21 right now here but uh as you get closer to the weekend closer to the maple seed suddenly <laughs> without any reason it gets worse i think yeah. it's you it's not me all <laughs> <laughs> well, for for how much I, I made fun of you for for last year for every time you did an event here was tornadoes or storms or <laughs> oh I'm expecting tornadoes I think I, uh, this year still it's it's owed to me for for this year yeah. yeah okay but that's it so Mo so Kelly yeah uh, I also had a, <laughs> I also went to a match um, except my I did it the other way i worked on the friday night to help build that was at the montreal range the one closest to me okay. so i was there uh, friday afternoon because i'd taken the day off friday afternoon and uh into the early evening um and then i went back on saturday to shoot the match uh it went it went well for me it went well uh what was mm -hmm. interesting was they have they have the rifle section and they have the pistol section and the two stages in the rifle section, they had the the shooting targets reversed. So we were shooting on white and the browns were uh, really? the, no, the no shoots. And uh, just to mix it up, they did that. And um, I really liked it. Like I found because the rifle section I don't see as well. And I find with the white shooting on the white, I found I could see it better. So and even watching other people shoot like at the, on the distance targets and stuff, I could see the holes. And oh, normally cool. I can't see them, right? <laughs> so I wish we would do that all the time. And I guess in Europe they do that. Uh, in some countries, anyways, I think they do that. Yeah, right. um, okay. So yeah, and uh, and I learned that yeah. I'm still because I was talking to my friend Louis because he obviously we, we're not allowed to record ourselves or or be recorded. But um, I feel like the next step for me to get better is moving faster between arrays. I think I'm still being I, i'm still moving like someone who's carrying a, a pistol in his hand okay. now that doesn't mean i'm not going to be safe like i'm obviously muzzle direction but just not being so hesitant and and actually running when i have an opportunity to run and not not that i'm baby stepping but you know it's that kind of still cautious so that's something i'm going to work on what you mean? I have a question. You can't, you can't record yourself? Yeah, I was just going to ask that. No, they we're not allowed to record there. No pictures, oh, no video. But like even if even if you don't publish it, you're you're still not allowed to record. They announce it, so I hmm. guess if they saw somebody recording it, they would say something. But that's it. Hmm. That's just that range. They don't. But oh yeah, range can do that. Yeah. yeah. Like my club doesn't like us recording video and posting it on social media, but we're allowed to do pictures. So. But okay. we still record so that we can learn from it as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I I had a feeling I was not moving as fast or as well as I should, but you know, it's good to have somebody else tell me that, right? Yeah. Um yeah. So that's something I'm gonna like I I mean, I'm gonna have tons of matches coming up for the rest of the year. So that's something I'm gonna have You're gonna be doing to, 30, aren't you, or something like that? Uh 21, 22. So really crazy. <laughs> so yeah. I have a question for you. Yes. So there is somebody I shot with, or he was not, I didn't shoot with him. He was in one of the squads. Anyways, so Guy, Guy wanted to know if you were going to, he says, I'm trying to get uh, Mo to shoot revolver. Okay. Yeah. 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 He listened yeah, yeah. to the show and he was there. And yeah. uh, I was asking him about it because he's a, he is a revolver shooter and he's going to be doing, he's uh, good. yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good shooter overall, too. And, um, He's going to be doing that, I think, for the Ontario Provincials and some other matches and stuff. Mm. So 
I was I was asking him questions about like what it's like to compete with a revolver and stuff. So yeah, that, be fast. Doing your yeah, it, yeah, and all that. But I, are you gonna I, try it? Uh, maybe down the road, I still want to get better at other stuff with the with a regular with a pistol. But um, yeah, down the road, I would try it. I, I mean, I want to try everything, right? So yeah. Uh, I don't think I would do PCC and nothing against the PCC guys. I just, I don't know. I feel like it's a handgun sport or a revolver sport more than a long gun sport, but that's just oh, me. PCC would be fun. Uh, PP, yeah. It would be. <laughs> okay. There's not, I, a, I, there's not a lot of it in Ontario. I haven't seen a lot of it where I've seen it more um, people using it out west and out east as well. Not you could just area. blaze the stage and just be like, "Oh yeah. man, I got yeah. I did that in like so short." What are you guys talking about? Those targets, those were easy. <laughs> were, those, those weren't hard at all. Yeah, yeah. We were some of the stages that we were shooting on the weekend were twenty five, almost thirty meters. And so, if you're doing that with a uh, with a rifle, you see, yeah, you it easy. just uh, roast them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like nothing, right? Um, yeah. So that was that match, and then. Uh, I received a package in the mail uh, from Alberta, and apparently, I got I received it sooner than the Ontario package. So Quebec wins this time. I actually want to break it to you, Mo. It was in yeah. Kelly's mailbox on Friday, according to the tracking. Oh, so she just didn't pick it up. I didn't pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you have it. When you when you posted your picture, I'm like, wait a minute, I gotta check this. <laughs> yeah. So when you posted your picture, I, I said I'm gonna have to go and check mine. So I just stopped. Damn it! I thought I, I thought I got it first. I thought I won. Oh, oh well. So much for that. It's, it's still a record. You got it within a few days of Ontario. So did you open it? I haven't opened mine yet because yeah, I'm busy. Yeah, did you open yeah, it? What did you get? I got that. And See I got everybody. Some, we have some. New I got a bunch of goodies leg. from. Uh, I got a bunch of goodies from Kyle. So it was good. Isn't that awesome? I already have some ideas of which matches I'm gonna give these out as prizes and stuff. So. Oh, cool. Um, what else did I put on my, I did my dry fire practice cause I have a match in Barrie, Ontario this Saturday. So it'll be my first time there and it's outdoors. So it'll be the first outdoor match. So I'm very, very excited about that to actually shoot outside. <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's really it for me. Okay. We will get into upcoming events. Upcoming events is sponsored by Telos Alpha. Telos Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the firearms vertical. They help with the business processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. You can learn more at telosalpha.com. And for events, we have... Maple Seed events are available at mapleseedrifleman.com. There are more being added all the time, and they are filling up fast. Uh, Tactics Training Group has a few courses going on. They have the basic pistol and rifle on May 28th at Colby Shooting Range in Waterloo, Ontario. June 4th, they're going to be doing that same course at Rock Cut in Powassan. June 11th, they're going to do... Uh, the intermediate pistol and rifle course at Rock Cut, <clears throat> Rock Cut, uh, Powassan. And on June 11th, Urban Tactical in Bradford. On June 12th, they have the advanced pistol and rifle at Rock Cut. If you want more information, you can go to tacticsgroupinc.com. Rock Cut is such an awesome name for a range. It yeah. Sounds so yeah. cool. Rock Cut. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Oh, where where where's the match at? Rock cut. Mm. Oh, agreed. Sounds, yeah. sounds great. And then uh, BTSA is hosting a Chaz three gun match on May fifteenth. Should so. be good. I wish I have a wedding that day. Otherwise, I would be out there. Yeah, I think I'm driving out to Chase for my do some work at my parents' place that weekend. I've been putting it off. I need to get out there. So You can't get out of the wedding? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got 40 cousins. I don't know why they'd be wrapped up about me missing one of their weddings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did I miss? Hmm? 
events. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, just going over events. Uh, ladies Days, Kelly, a.k.a. CCFR Women's Division, is looking to sponsor and support some Ladies Days at your range. This is a range-driven initiative, but if you would like sponsorship and support, you can contact Kelly at slamfireradio at gmail.com or info at firearmsrights.ca, and they'll send you the package and help you out doing it. Yeah, we'll send that out to you, but um, yeah. <laughs> and I Lots got, of events um, happening. I got word that there's going to be a three gun uh, group starting up again in Northern BC. So I'll, uh, oh. I'll bring out some more information once that's finalized. Northwestern or Northeastern. <laughs> My lips are not really sealed, but uh, somewhat <laughs> sealed. <laughs> I'm wondering if is Smithers part of that at all? No, they've already they put out their dates today. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Smithers. Smithers. Yeah, the Smithers Terrace area. Yeah, okay. they put out their dates today. Yeah. Okay, well, get on to the news. First one's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. My, my Amazon delivery went, yeah. got seriously awry. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the drone delivery hasn't become mainstream yet. You were the test bed and... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, it's really bad. There's a lot of drones that have gotten through. So, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. yeah. So, a drone carrying 11 guns was found stuck in a tree near the Canadian US border in southwestern Ontario. Do we know if the tree is going to get accommodation for? Uh... <laughs> no, it's going to get charged because it's in possession of them. Oh, let's see. <laughs> it's going to get turned into paper. <laughs> This is the most effective gun control uh, this year. That tree. Woo, bravo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need more trees. Yeah. <laughs> we have a ton of trees. <laughs> but what it is going to do is probably going to create more restrictions, regulations. There, not that there isn't any already anyways, mm. because we all know that there, there are some there's some restrictions already for flying drones so mm-hmm. or licensing stuff. So it's just going to create more because the more that you create, the safer things are going to be. Let's be real. Obviously, right? Obviously. People won't ignore the rules. No. They will fly their drones according to the yeah, rules. Yeah, think? <laughs> Even when they're loaded with guns. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a good drone. 11, like, okay, let's pretend. Oh, it, I saw a picture of it. It was, yeah. it was one of the big ones. Beefy, yeah, the beefy like, I think yeah. it at least fly. it had six or eight propellers on it. Yeah. The mm-hmm. rotors, whatever you want to call them. Well, you, when you think about it, it's kind of, it, yeah. So the area that it was flying from and over into it would have to be it, it'd have to be significant with and also with the weight as well so yeah. it wasn't a, it wasn't a cheapy one so i like hey. i love the innovation i yeah. love seeing yeah. advancements in technology and yeah yeah yep yeah. 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 <laughs> creative criminals they'll be <laughs> they'll be uh catap- they'll be catapulting guns over the border before you oh know. you need a oh. glock trebuchet <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cover <Locked> everyone. <laughs> uh, oh. Somebody walking yeah. their dog, they'll be like, "Oh, what is that?" <laughs> Fly <Smack. back>. Flying <laughs> blocks. <laughs> okay, uh, CZ put out a recall notice on their 600 bolt action rifles. Mm. Apparently, a user removable barrel does not always fit on. Right you every could put time, it too or far if you impro- improperly install it, then you can put yeah. it too far forward, and then if you um, fire it, it will the case head separation, the back part blows up. The bad part. You you bad are there happen. is a there is a warning system for if you've improperly assembled it, and the warning system is it blows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like as part of this. Like I feel like part of this is. Um, they didn't design it for dummies and uh they like maybe they're like even if you made your instructions super clear the barrel has to be seated correctly or else you can fire out a battery right um or with with incorrect headspace like even if you put those warnings in they probably relied on people too much and they had a couple people kaboom their rifles because they didn't do it properly and mm. yeah. yeah it's too bad because I, I i think it's a, a cool design it just needs uh 
skilled user needs a careful user, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. to, to install those barrels. Their yeah. fix is to permanently install them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Uh, feature of the gun that was probably selling a lot of them is no longer a reason. I don't know. Would it. you buy uh, one to, uh, to swap barrels on it? I think it's a I cool. I think it would be something I'd look at as a feature to might help entice the help make the decision a little easier on buying a gun. Because like, like that's their thing. their alphas were priced pretty competitively. Like they were cheaper than than a Tika and by CZ. So it's still like it's a good rifle manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got the removable barrel, but I don't know center fire. I, I I guess that would make it easy if I shot a barrel out. If I was if I was running six five Creedmoor or something like that, or or maybe something hotter six Creedmoor two eighty four or something that was like a barrel burner, ran a barrel out. It'd be nothing to replace it. You know, three Allen keys out she goes or three torques and you know on to the next one. See, I was thinking like you could go from coyote gun to your big game gun with the barrel swap because But then you're able... scope you gotta re change your scope around, like re, re zero it in, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the price of them, you just buy another one. <laughs> I think. But maybe maybe that's a flippant <laughs> way of, of uh, viewing it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. In other news, BC has dropped their proposed some of their proposed regulations for shooting ranges. Right. So they I were, put this in, I put this in oh, here. Oh yeah, they had some really bad. So ones in there, it right? was Bill yeah. Four. So Bill Four, what was happening is so the they were going to require ranges to basically track and keep records for and ask people to show their pals, etc. And other various uh, information and ID when they come to the range. And then um, ranges push back. And one of the reasons is because they would have to hire actually somebody to inspect and verify the ID. So that would be an added cost, like commissioners, they'd have to hire a commissioner or whatever. And they'd also have to also record keeping would have to, they'd have to have a um, storage. And then they like the clubs just couldn't afford it. Uh, but the other thing that they were saying is if people are actually doing this, it's going to cause people to go instead of coming to the range and shooting at the range in a safe and also a CFO inspected range, they would be going out into the back 40 or wherever. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so this is going to be counterproductive. So the legislation that was put in place was for gangs. And guess what? Gangs aren't going to the range. <laughs> I just, I just yeah. like, anyways. Don't so, see them. I usually no. don't see them there. No. Yeah. And they no. don't have, and they're, I'll, I'll let you in on another secret as well. They don't typically have their pals as well. So no. just saying. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So the uh, the BC uh, Minister of Public Safety, uh, they said, okay. Uh, Thank God. Kind of, yeah, oh right. Because like yeah. the most ranges, what you probably, you, you go to McDonald's, you find the fry guy, you're like, what are you making? Give him a buck more per hour. Now you work at the range and you take down people's pals and you write in this stupid book. And that's your job. Yeah, because you can't just like have people write it down when they when they show up, and you got to like get all this ID information and like write it down in a book that maybe the government will come to take a look at at some point. Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. ridiculous. So that was it. So yeah, good for the BC clubs pushing back and it good. being retracted. Yeah, so good. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For uh, legal fund do donations, we have the. Ethelbert Handgun Club donated 200 bucks. Yep. Nice. And if you or your club is looking for a way to help the CCFR and fund the massive upcoming court battle, you can uh, do so by sending EMT to finance, finance at firearmsrights.ca. <clears throat> Give me a second here. Okay. And uh, new gun stuff. New Gun Stuff is sponsored by Bolt Action Coffee. Slamfire Radio is a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. Their coffee is roasted in small batches, just like uh, Mo's Ammo. And it's quite <laughs> honestly some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. Send it to your house by going to Bolt Action Rifle, boltactioncoffee.com and use discount code SLAMFIRE, all one word, capitals. What if you want some of Mo's Ammo? Where do you, where do you go and get that? Do you get oh. a discount code? Depends on um, your Patreon level. 
Yeah. <laughs> if, if you if you place your order today, you'll get it in uh, two years. And it'll yeah. be like hundred rounds. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. All right. <laughs> or leftovers, because you make a hundred fresh for every match, right? Fresh, fresh leftovers from last time. Can't use them. They're no good anymore. Yeah. What happens if you're using more than a hundred rounds at a match? I make more than a hundred. <laughs> I make enough. I make enough plus like ten percent, whatever the round count it is usually. So, you, is that seriously what you'd bring to a match? The round count plus ten percent? Yeah, usually. Yeah, that's crazy. Holy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No. I bring, I bring like double. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> now you guys gotta jinx me, and I gotta get like two reshoots this week and watch. Okay. Shuds. <laughs> just, just, reshoots. <laughs> gonna be some hard like 50 meter steel plate and you're gonna like spend two mags on it and then you won't be able to finish okay it. don't check it for real <laughs> i'm gonna be so mad <laughs> uh if you're running low on ammo uh cci blazer is at solely outdoors it's 369 per thousand and uh that's i think that's not bad. I yeah, that's that's good. these I days know. that's giving it away yeah wow yeah. aluminum um, case but yeah, yeah hey, what uh, what is it is it 124? 150. 150. 150. You probably oh. don't want to run this in a pick. You may not make par factor with it. You won't. No. You won't. But it's great for you might have, medials. Uh prop failures <laughs> trying to trying to knock over his plates. Like so. yeah. yeah. Probably want your 147s for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh next uh Rangeview Sports has federal gold medal match 65 Creedmore. And they've got them in the 130 grain burger OTM. Nice. I know a lot of the other uh, um, federal gold match is Sierra bullets. Like they, they typically use like a Sierra match king in them. Um, it's kind of cool to see burger bullets in there. I don't know how long they've been doing that, but okay. it's neat. 48 bucks a box, but it's fancy stuff. Uh, Tenda also has uh, a whole bunch of Henry stuff that they just got in. So if you're looking for like a Henry uh, lever action rootin' tootin' cowboy gun, uh, they got that kind of stuff. Is that actually an official term for it? Root and tootin'? That, that is the uh, yeah. technical designation. Oh, yeah, it's look jargon. Look at that. Mo, look. Uh, this is the other one. This this one's actually available sooner. And it was, they uh, these were initially uh, priced at $3,700. Uh, but it now lo looks like they're down to $3,250. These, I believe these are rebarrels. Um, so... Uh, I run guns and a couple of other, um, I think actually just iron guns. They have the restricted versions in, but they're all restricted as rifles, not as pistols. Mm. So long story short, no, I'll, I'll do the full long story. Right. The or XCRs that first came into long? the country, the XCRs, there, there were a couple of pistol XCRs. That's why we have the XCR mags, the, the LAR mags. Yeah. Um, a couple of them came into the country, registered as pistols. You can never register a pistol as a rifle. These are registered as restricted rifles, short barrel rifles. Uh, so you can put a stock and a, and a barrel on it. I believe that's what Red Deer Shooting Center is doing uh, because the timeline that they have, four to six weeks, is a lot sooner than the official non-restricted from the factory barrel that uh, mm. uh, that some of the others are getting. So uh, if you can't wait, Red Deer, Red Deer Shooting Center will have these sooner than everyone else. And they're sh right now uh, pre-ordering for $3,250. Uh, otherwise, if you want them cheaper, Marstar has them as a pre-order for thirty ninety-nine or thirty-one hundred. If you were, um, they're do, do, they're doing a pre-order, ten percent deposit, uh, no timeline, no official ETA. Uh, mm -hmm. But North Silva was saying September October, yep. September October being quite a ways from now. It could be September October November December anywhere till like spring summer next year. Really, if you wanted to be pessimistic about it, so. Um, yeah, but they're a lot cheaper. Yeah. And uh, I think that's all I have. Sweet. Sweet. The brand twos are really the big news because um, the other fancy semi-auto 223 we could get was the APC 223. I have heard good and bad things about them. I've heard like some good, some bad. Um, having another option that's made by CZ. Mm. CZ makes some good stuff and 3100 is... Uh, expensive but really like a tavor is 2400 2500 ish yeah. and uh they're not precision rifles and their triggers suck and uh they're bulb ups so who wants them anyways whereas this thing you know it's better so who wants them anyway? <laughs> <laughs> i'm just 
sticking a knife in someone else. Some, some listener out there is, is has quit our show just because of my comments on bull pups. <laughs> a few thousand people want them. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get into the main topic. Okay, and for our main topic, we have Ken Kupch here to talk to us and break down Canadian field sporting. But to start off with, Ken, why don't you introduce yourself and give us a little bit of rundown on your shooting career because i know i know personally it's quite extensive and very accomplished so okay thanks guys uh yeah it's been a long long career i i started with uh probably in the late 70s with uh what was action shooting at that time it was ppc police pistol combat and then we got into hipsec right you know right in the late 70s and I shot IPSC for about 40 years now, uh, and as well as Steel Challenge. I took about 10 years for cowboy action shooting. Um, I shot, uh, I, I had a lot of success with that. I won a lot of regional shoots. I won the U.S. Nationals. I won 10 consecutive Canadian championships. But I kind of got tired of it, and I went back to Steel Challenge and a, and a lot more IPSC shooting. And in 2016 is when I started shotguns. And I kind of fell in love with it. I, I don't think I shot a handgun for the last couple of years now since I started shotguns. So that, oh, that, really? that's, that's what got me to where I am now. Okay. okay. So like, what brought you to shotguns? Like, What do you like about the, the shotguns and the like, sporting clays? Um, mostly that it's different because... If I shot sporting clays for 40 years and I found IPSC today, I'd, I'd fall in love with IPSC, I guarantee it. Because you, uh, you keep doing the same thing over and over and you just you just get tired of it. But sporting clays are a new challenge. Um, you know, I went to my first match five years ago or maybe six years ago. And, you know, I expected I'd be in the top five or what I didn't think I'd win it, but I'd be in the top five. And I was like 40th or 50th place. So... <laughs> that made me so much more determined to, to figure out this game and, and it's challenging and, and fun and um, every target's different. And just when you think you got it figured out, it all falls apart. So it, it's, uh, it's really exciting. Cool. Um, I've kind of noticed that too. It's, it, I imagine that feeling from dominating in your chosen sports for, for so long and then that wake up call when you, Go out expecting to do good and then not doing as good as you would expect in the standings would definitely be a driver for sure. It, it was pretty funny. It was a waking up, but I mean, after you've shot a lot and, and you've won a lot of matches, winning isn't really as important as what you think it is. It's uh, it's really not about winning. It's about playing the game, but you have to win in order to learn that, I think. That's fair. I find sporting clays is really easy to just compete against yourself instead of trying to compete with everyone else. Would you agree? Uh, I agree because it's a it's a individual sport. It's uh, they compare it to golf a lot because you you drive around the course with your uh, golf carts or you know buggies and stuff, and you go to all these different stations. So you you, you do compete against yourself, and um, people worry about their scores sometimes, but nobody else cares about your score until you start beating them and then they're going to care about your score <laughs> no <laughs> okay and what was it last year your main purpose that you were on here you started uh you were bringing canadian field sporting was that last year that you started to bring that in yeah i think it's been going for about two years now okay um before i could before i tell you about canadian field sporting i think your audience is not all shotgun shooters. So before Canadian field sporting and American field sporting and field sporting international, we had trap, um, which is a hundred years old. It's been, been around for a hundred years and it's a sport where it's always the same. It's uh, the targets are going away from you. Uh, there's a couple of options in it. Like there's a handicap where you shoot from farther back and there's trap doubles. So trap was one game. Uh, skeet was another one. Uh, skeet, you're in a semicircle and you have the high house and low house with the targets coming across. And both trap and skeet have Olympic sports and amateur sports. 
so the amateur is you know a little easier for people to shoot and and skeet it's not quite as big around here but it's huge all over north america um when people say they're going skeet shooting you know if they're shooting targets off the back of their truck they call that skeet shooting but skeet is actually a sport they actually call the target skeets it's hilarious when they want to buy a box of skeets but um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we have those two sports and then sporting clay started, you know, about a hundred years ago as well, but it didn't get into North America until maybe 40 years ago. And sporting clays has the sporting clays course. Five stand is considered part of sporting clays. You have the European and, and British ones like the fit task and compact. That's all part of sporting clays, uh, super sporting is another sporting clays event so it's all in all in uh all under the sporting clays umbrella so what uh a couple of years ago when american field sporting started they brought out five fields five or, or sorry four four fields four different courses and one course is similar to five stand another is similar to uh fee task and another one is similar to super sporting. And um, if you don't shoot shotguns, you don't know what might not know what all those are. But um, that that's how it's uh, how it was broken down. And uh, so uh, the the big thing about field sporting, uh, the the fellow that started it, Mark Baltazar, he wanted people to have fun and challenge themselves. So he wanted both of those things. He wanted less rules and just to make the shooting more fun. So we we have those four courses, and that, that, that's how it started. Okay. okay. So sound, I didn't realize that, that uh, it's more or less all-encompassing, basically taking sporting clays and just encompassing all the different disciplines of what falls under that uh, sporting clays umbrella. Yeah, what you see now is uh, big shoots in the U.S. They'll have a, a main event, and they'll have... They'll, they'll, they still might have five stand or, or fit task, but now they're starting to add uh, field sporting in there as well. And field sporting is in five countries now, and it's, it's there's going to be more added this year. So it's it'll be international. It already is international, but it's just getting bigger all the time. Okay. Well, you were talking about the different courses with the feet. One's like feet task, one's like five stand, one's like super sporting can you break down the different courses and what a person would expect to see on those courses i know they're color coded right they are there's uh the green course is similar to five stand the white and red are similar to fee task and the blue is similar to super sporting um it's really hard to describe the the format you know it's just when you go shoot a match it's just easier to do it you know you just kind of follow along but I'll tell you the two things that are unique to field sporting. Uh, one is that they have an expert. And the expert is typically the hardest target on the course. And when you when you shoot a, a field of 25 targets, but you can get 26 points because if you hit that expert with the first shot, you get uh, two points for breaking it in, instead of just one. So you can actually you can actually score 26 on a, on a course. Uh, the other thing that's unique about field sporting is that uh, um, master class shooters. Now, in pistol and stuff, we have grandmasters, but shotgun, uh, instead of masters, uh, it, they have double A, and then they have masters, the top class. So there's no no grandmaster class. Um, so the double uh, A shooters and the master class shooters have to start with the gun down. So the top of the, top of the gun has to be below your uh, armpit is, is what the uh, rule is. Everybody else, if you're C-class or D-class, you can pre-mount the gun when you before you call, call pull. But if you're double A or master, you cannot move your gun until you actually see the target. Okay, okay. who judges judge that? The referee that judges that. Yeah. Because there'll be a referee or somebody keeping score, and they 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 watch for that. But I mean, the guys are good. The guys that are in double A or master, uh, they know they are. So, um, and 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 if you're a C class or a D class or 
any other class, you can start with the gun down too, but you don't have to. The thing is you can pre-mount and it gives you a bit of an advantage. Okay. Um, now, back to the courses, I know like with the different courses, there was different positions. Now, like, I, I know we, one we shot on the weekend, we had five positions and then the other one had three positions or yeah, three positions. Correct. Yeah, the one with five positions is the green course. And that was on the five stand in Grand Prairie. Um, so that, that was the green. And then the other one was the white course with three uh, stations. Okay. And then the other two courses, are they both three position courses? As the, well, uh, the red course is five positions, uh, similar to the green. Um, and then the blue course actually has two positions and two sets of targets at each. So it's kind of similar to super sporting, the blue one. So, so you'll go to one position and you'll shoot uh, three different targets in different combinations. And then you'll shoot the other three different targets in different comp combinations. And then you move over to a, a second position and repeat it. And the expert can be on any one of those. They'll, they'll designate the expert, which one it is and when you shoot it. Okay. Cool. Um, how would this like progress? Like you walk up, how, how do you wait, make your way th through the course? Well, um, for example, um, some of you know how, to, how, how five stand works, but, uh, in field sporting, the green course, you actually start on the center position. So the first shooter will go to the center position and view all the targets. You view them from the center. Then, then the first shooter will shoot. Uh, there will be, actually from that position, there'll be four two-shot singles, which means there'll be a single target and you're allowed to shoot twice at it. And then you'll have the expert, which you get two shots at. And once the first shooter is finished, then everybody else follows. The next shooter, next shooter, and so on. Then we when we move to the next position, which is a second position, but it's a fourth position on a five stand, um, you will get a one shot single. And with a one shot single, you're only allowed one shot. Uh, so if you shoot two shots, you get a zero for the target. Okay. But if you, if you miss it, you need the second shot, then I guess it doesn't matter because you're still getting zero for the target. So you'll get a one shot single and um, when it, when it started out, you weren't allowed to load two shells, but now now you are. Uh, you can load two. You just can only shoot one to get a score. And then you'll have two pairs. They might be report or they might be true pairs. You know, they might come out simultaneously, but you know, they'll, it, it's on the menu. It'll tell you what what you're going to be doing. And then again, after the first shooter shoots, second one follows. Everybody shoots that position before they move to the next one. Okay. Well, on the pairs, like you were saying, you, yeah, you get your, your show me birds and this was, and it's something similar. I haven't shot fee test, but something similar to, uh, super sporting and is it important to know. Cause I think that's one thing, one aspect that actually really makes like super sporting and the CFS interesting is that you only get to see the birds as singles. You don't get to see the pairs. Like if it's a true pair, you don't get to see a show me true pair. Or Correct. A port pair. Correct. And fee task, um, if you have a true pair, you get to see the actual pair, but in oh. field sporting, you only get to see them as singles. So you gotta, you know, if there's a lot of machines and a lot of targets, you gotta remember, can I shoot that target late? Can I shoot it early? Um, I, I always try to check the menus, especially if I know the shooting order. So I know which pair I'm gonna have to shoot as a true pair. So I can have it all figured out in advance rather than, you know, waiting till you get there and not knowing which one to shoot first. Yeah, I screwed up on on the one course this weekend on that. Should have gone for the C bird, went for the B bird at first, and C was in the bush by the time I got to it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you, you kind of, and and the other thing is, a lot of them you shoot either way, but you have to plan for it. If you shoot the first one, then you look back at the other machine. Well, that that target's gone. You got to look where it's going to be after you take that time to shoot the first target. You have your eyes have to go to where you know, to where it's going to be, not, not back to where it was. <laughs> Otherwise it'll hit the ground and you're, you're done. Yeah. And the show me's are just at the first station, correct? 
yeah, you only get to see the targets at the first station. You get to view them twice each. Um, you know, if they're if they're easy targets, we usually only look once. But you can you can see two two of each from the first position. Yes, I I love and hate it. I, I think it's interesting because yeah, you got to keep that in your mind and remember where the path of every bird to really come up with your your true plan to be effective at it. In my mind, yeah, there's anyways. a. There's a lot to shotgun shooting, and and um, I'm probably a poor example for that because I do everything wrong. When I when I started, uh, one of the guys told me he says in this sport you can do everything wrong and still have really good results, and that that would be me because I do it all different than everybody else. Well, if it produces results, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I've I've I just tried and tested everything I could, and um, I just know. The things that work work for me, and I, I don't recommend them to other people. You know, I recommend you follow the, you know, what everybody else says. But yeah, I, I don't do it. It's uh, it's just uh, some of it. I don't know. It just uh, it doesn't work for me. Fair enough. So, how would a person get ready if they've never shot play sports or whatever? Or- what now? How would you would you suggest them going and trying CFS or go try one of the oh, other? Oh sure, yeah, just go out and shoot it. Just just go to any club, any tournament. <clears throat> I like tournaments, um, because that's your best practice. You know, if you want to train, if you can get to tournaments, that's that's the best place to learn. Yeah. Um, and then and then you can you know after the shoot, if you can go back and you know practice in some of the targets you missed, that's your your quickest way to learn. Because a lot of people they get nervous about being in a competition, or but it's you know it's just all it is is a, a test of what you know, and it's a way of learning. And and uh, if you never shoot tournaments or you never shoot in competition, you'll never be able to do it because uh, you you just don't have the background in it. So you got to shoot lots. You got to shoot lots as much as you can. Oh, for sure. I would encourage. I would same thing. I, just for this simple experience they like, encourage people to go to a competition and for like for some reason people are afraid to go to a competition because oh it's a competition i'm not good enough i don't want to make a fool of myself but really we, yeah we call it a competition it's an excuse to gather as a big bigger group of people and have a good weekend shooting and shooting some stuff that you might not ordinarily see and shooting with people that you don't see every day exactly it's a way for people to get together and and um, like I said, it's just a test of what you know. And, and you know, if you shoot a bad score, nobody cares. I mean, you, you it bothers some people, but there's nothing to worry about because nobody else cares what you shoot. They're all, you know, worried about their own and what they're doing. But it's uh, it puts you in a different um, environment to be shooting in a competition than to just be practicing. And to be a well-rounded shooter it's important to learn that and to have that skill. For sure. So how would somebody find these matches to, to get to a match? Cause I know every club has their Facebook page, but is there a central place where a person could go find a match that's close to them or something? Yeah. The, the sporting clays shoots, you can, the best place to find them is on the calendar of, uh, uh, cnsca.ca. Uh, there's a calendar on there that has most of them. Uh, now, it doesn't show all the uh, NSCA matches or all the – we've got a couple of fee task matches in Alberta. Uh, I don't believe that those are listed there. So, actually, on, if you go to Facebook on Western Canadian Sporting Clays, I try to help keep people up to date on what's coming up and stuff on there as well. So, But there's there's a match every weekend somewhere that you can shoot, you know, between Sporting Clays and, you know, other shotgun events. There's uh, – a lot of clubs will have um, charity shoots and corporate shoots. Um, so those are a little bit more laid back. And then the registered shoots are the actual uh, competitions. So those are the ones that would be registered with NSCA in the U.S. or CNSCA in Canada. Or, or NSCA, you know, is actually in Canada and the U.S. So uh, both, both places. It's international. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I would say 
pretty much every club. If you have a club near you, you can talk to them because most clubs will post it on their website as well. I know we do up here. We post on a website and try and get it on our Facebook and that too. Exactly. The club's all, and there's, uh, gosh, I think there's maybe, there's got to be eight to 10 sporting clays clubs in Alberta. Uh, so, so they're everywhere. And some of them are only trap clubs and they might have a five stand, but um, there's, there's sporting clays clubs almost in every area in Alberta right now. So that's, uh, it's easy to get to. What would you say the average drive, just if you were to pick, what would the average drive for someone in Alberta be for, from a sporting clay facility? Sorry, from they're like, pretty close. Just as, like as an average, like there, there's what, one right close to Edmonton. Uh, how far do you drive to? Well, um, I shoot a little bit of trap when I'm not shooting sporting clays, and that's right by the airport in Edmonton. Uh, most of my shooting I do at, at Blackmore Shooting Sports, and I drive about an hour and 15 minutes to get there. And I, tr- I try to get out there three, four times a week. There's another club. Uh, east of Edmonton, called Beaver Hills Sporting Clays. Uh, it's actually a little bit closer, but the uh, the Blackmore Range, um, they have a lot more competition targets. They they run a lot of competitions, and and for me, it's a way better place for me to train. Okay. Well, and speaking of Blackmores and competitions, you guys are hosting the first CFS Nationals this year too, right? Yes, it'll be the first uh, first time ever, and that's on July 30th and July 31st at Blackmore Shooting Sports. And again, anybody can shoot it. You don't have to qualify. You don't have to be a certain level of shooter. Um, anybody can come out and shoot it. You can you can bring your duck hunting gun and you know come come play around and have some fun. Uh, we'll be shooting. We'll, we'll be shooting. Um, all the courses. So on the Saturday, we'll have the red, white, uh, uh, the red, white, green, and blue. And then we'll, we'll change all the targets Saturday night and have all of four courses again on Sunday. So there'll be 200 targets. And if that's not enough shooting for you, we'll have, we'll also have a hundred on the main course Saturday and a hundred on the main course Sunday as, uh, as another event, it'll be a separate event, but the nationals will be the, the 200, uh, Canadian field sporting with a total points of 208. Because if you hit the expert every time you get, you can, if you run everything, hit all the experts, you get 208 points. Okay. Well, that other event, is that registered as well or? Yes, it'll be registered. Yeah. And, uh, I think, I think that it'll be a prelim on the Saturday and then the main event of a hundred targets on Sunday. But we're still, you know, just kind of putting that together, what, how exactly we're going to do it. But yeah, it'll, it'll be registered as well. What about cost? Like what's the registration cost? Um, at most clubs you go to, you're going to pay a dollar target. Uh, at Blackmore, the target fees are less, like they've been charging less just to, you know, get lots of people out. So, so but when you shoot a, a national match, I mean, there's going to be some prizes and stuff like that. So I, I imagine it's going to be about, you know, uh, close to $200 to enter the uh, field sporting. And then the other one will be, uh, I'm just guessing, maybe 150 or something. But shotgun, the shotgun sports are not cheap. They, they, uh, they're they expensive because by the time you pay for your targets and your ammo and and I mean, the clubs have big expenses too with the real estate and all the machines they have out there. So it's, uh, you know, it costs money. So it seems it's, like it's, the, it's, the shotguns that people choose aren't, uh, aren't the cheapest either. <laughs> well, it, it depends what you shoot. Um, a, a lot of guys will, you know, a good place to start the Browning and Breda make some guns in the $3,000 range. Uh, when I started shotguns, I, I was shocked because my Ipsic gun, uh, I shot open. So the guns I used were maybe five or six thousand hmm. dollars, and they were they were pretty much the best guns you could get. And then I go to shotguns and I see these twenty and thirty thousand dollar guns, and I'm like, "Are you kidding? These only <laughs> shoot two shots. They cost that kind of money." But um, I'm shooting a, 
a Craig off now, I've had pretty much everything. And, you know, you, you get to different levels. Uh, a $10,000 gun is going to be better than a, than a $3,000 gun. And, you know, a $15,000 gun might be better than a $10,000 gun, but there is a limit. And once you get into that, the higher end guns, you're paying a lot more for cosmetics. The functionality is about the same, you know, as, as you know, if you, if you spend $20,000 in a gun or, or 60,000, you're just buying cosmetics after that. It's not a better gun to shoot with. And the most economical guns are probably in the $3,000 range for over-unders, or you can go to semi-autos and you can, yeah, I guess they're probably two to 3,000, most of them as well. But uh, you, can, you can spend as much as you want in a gun, but you don't have to. It's not necessary. Mm-hmm. What would you say, if someone was looking to buy a gun for clay sports, what would be your recommendations for stuff to, to look for? Well, probably the most important thing with a, a shotgun is that it fits you. Because a lot of times you're just looking at the target. You're not looking at down your barrel. And it's got to shoot, you know, pretty much where, where you're looking. So you, uh, gun fit. Bit, can you describe yeah, a little done. bit more on what you mean by, by fit? Well, if you, um, when I, when I shot the pistol, a lot of times, if I was shooting steel challenge or something like that to get my stance, uh, cause you, you want your stance so that you drive your gun and come right out to the target. You don't want to come out to the right of the target, and have to move it to the left or come out, you know, somewhere else and have to move. You want to come straight out of your holster to the target and that's all in your stance. So if you close your eyes and draw your gun and open your eyes and look where it's pointed. If you're not pointed at the target, you don't move your gun over the target. You turn your feet so that your gun is pointed right at the target. That's your natural uh, point of aim. And the shotgun's the same thing. You want to be able to come up and uh, to to exactly where where you're going to be shooting. So shotgun fit is, you know, it, it's just kind of it's got to fit you so that it can do that. Okay. Most, most guys will tell you that you, you know, you focus, you know, really hard in target. I don't necessarily do that, but, you know, focus on the target rather than the gun. And I, I mean, there are targets where I don't even see my gun. I mean, I just see the target and, you know, if they're fast and, and you just don't have time, but um, I, I still, see my gun a lot. Maybe that comes from pistol shooting, but I, I see the bead all the time. I see the, I shoot the gap. I see the gap between the, uh, the barrel and the target, but you, you, you really want the gun to be shooting where you look, where you're looking is where you want the gun to be shooting. Yeah. You don't want to move that gun into your eyesight. You want it just to be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you want to, um, you want to be able to just look at the target, bring up the gun, and shoot it. Okay. Um. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I have actually. So I went in and looked at the website, and I posted in our show notes as well, so people can go in there and they can refer to it. I went through and looked at all of the clubs that uh, shoot this as well. I do have to say that we have some work to do out east. I'm in Ontario. So I have shot five uh, stand at uh, Galt and had a great time doing it. So great recommendation from you is if uh, people are interested in getting into it, just go and shoot it. I was horrible at it, by the way. Um, But uh, what if, like, as I said, there's not a lot of clubs out east. Like there's none in Prince Edward Island. There's none in, there might be one in Nova Scotia. Uh, But, and in Ontario, there's only three. So how can we get more clubs involved or how can clubs join your organization? Well, that's up to the shooters, I guess, to, you know, it's, it's got to go through the shooters. Mm-hmm. Um, I've shot at Galt and I've shot at Oshawa yep. and they're, they're really nice clubs out there. Um, and I wish I could go now, but I can't because they won't let me in an airplane anymore. <laughs> and hopefully that'll change soon. But um in the, in the Maritimes, there's there's quite a few. Cl- they're pretty active out there in mm-hmm. uh, 
um, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. They, they've got quite a few shooters there. Yeah, so if the club's interested, or if the shooters are interested, get your club involved and then contact the organization. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got a, there's a Facebook uh, page for Canadian Field Sporting. Okay. So anybody's free to, you know, ask questions on there. Uh, Mark monitors it pretty close, and I, I, I see most of the stuff on it as well. So if they have questions or they, you know, they want to have a match, we can always help them get set up with that. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Cool. It, you drill them all? Yeah, a lot of a lot of it sounded like maple seed. You're talking about like in, in POA, getting getting your natural point of aim and uh, making sure everything's fitted to you. And um, it just reminded me, like I'm, I'm going to go teach some maple seed this weekend, and I need to uh, cut some foam so I can build up some cheek rests and build some field expedient uh, fitting <laughs> right right out, out on the uh, out on the match. So uh, it should be good. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll give you an opportunity, Ken, to give any. Shout outs, self promo that you want here. Well, I guess uh, you know I, I have people that have helped me through my whole career, and I appreciate it. Uh, one is Wild West Shooting Center, which I'm a part owner of, um, and Atlanta Arms Namo in, in Georgia, uh, Pila Canada, Blackmore Shooting Sports, uh, Kicks Chokes, and and. Ernie Hill, there's a, there's a few more that have supported me the whole time, and I, I appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, that's about it, I think. Okay. And awesome. You're on Facebook. Like you got the Ken Kupch shooter page I, there. Yeah, I've got a shooting page on Facebook, Ken Kupch shooting page. Um, and I, I've put a lot of tips and a lot of things I do. Like, you have to scroll back to see it all. But how to how to set up a gun, how to how to use a patterning board, um, how how to shoot various targets, because every target's different. I use a different method for almost every every one of them. Uh, there's there's you know some of the methods you use for shooting the targets. You use uh, a sustained lead where you get in front, you move the same speed as a bird. Uh, another one is a pull through where you come from behind it and just swing right through it and and pull a trigger when it feels right. Um, Another one that I do sometimes that probably isn't that recommended, I, I actually trap the bird where I just wait for it, pull a trigger when it gets close. I don't move my gun at all. Okay. Um, there, there's there's all kinds of techniques. And see, the thing with, with the targets, what happens is the target's moving and it takes time for your shot to get there with, with shotguns. They're, they're going, and they slow down really quick. So So you have to estimate how long it takes for your shot to get to the target. So you know how long to shoot in front of it, and if you if you don't shoot far enough in front of it, if your if your first pellet's late, they're all going to be late. So you're, you're going to shoot behind it. So, um, and and the angle has a lot to do with it. If it's going straight across, uh, it's going to need more lead than one that's quartering, going away from you or coming in. So it's just all little techniques that you have to. There, there's so much to learn because every target's different. And again, that's another way that they compare it to golf because with golf, every course is different. You know, every everything is different. And the weather's different, so everything changes, and you got to be able to adapt and and figure it out. And sporting clays is exactly like that, for sure. Well, thank you very much for this insight into the clay shooting sports, and then it breaking down the Canadian field sporting for us. Anytime. Thanks for having me on the show. And thank you again, Ken, for coming on and letting us know about the clay sports and the Canadian field sporting. And we'll get on to listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full-service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, park rising, and Cerakote finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca also find him on facebook and instagram and emails uh mo you want to take this one sure 
Hey, everyone. I am not sure if you've seen this yet, but the Springfield Sports Club in New Brunswick needs our shooting community's help in the fight against the CF CFO appeal of the CFO's loss in court. They are trying to raise 600000 to continue the fight against the abusive parts of the CFO in New Brunswick is trying to give itself. The government lost, but is trying to win by burying the club financially. We all need to help this to fight cause if the CFO wins, they will take that as a right to make up the rules that they do not have the power to do. See the link below for the GoFundMe, which we can share, right? Yep. And uh, and then I guess he mentions that uh, Ian Runkle has a, a, a video on this. And I uh, hope you mentioned this during your podcast. Thanks. Thanks, gang. Ross Nodder. Yep. So guess what? We mentioned it during the podcast. Um, yeah, so Ian put out a thing about it, but this was something that we talked about way back when, when Trevor was still on the show and mm-hmm. we, and how Springfield actually won, but it looks like, uh, the CFO is appealing. So guess what? Going back to court. So it's important to support them. Yeah. Yeah. And government money is unlimited. So. Well, it isn't. It's oh. our money. We're paying for it. No, I, quite I, the oh, unlimited, unlimited. Uh, unlimited I, spending, anyways. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going broke fighting myself. Okay. Nothing <laughs> yeah. well, from Patreon, Instagram. I did see we had a Facebook review on from I believe it was Richard on the 21st. Have we read that one? Uh, no, I no. didn't put it in here. So we'll put it in yeah. the next show. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, if you would like to send the show an email, you can send us an email at slamfireradio at gmail.com. Excellent. Hmm? Nothing. Just talking out of my breath. Okay. Outside <laughs> voice again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Patreon supporters, we do have a new one. Stephen E for $4. And uh, nice. Patreon supporters should have received some patches, I think. Pedro, you, yeah, you've got the package available I gave there. One person, yeah. I think uh, Stephen, I'll need your uh, address. If we yeah. was was he a new one or was he an edited one? He's just an edit. But okay, has he gotten one in the past? Does he want another uh, one? Yeah, where is he? One. I have no idea. I Does if he you deliver have not your mail? Yours, or if you, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's my old guy. My, my like car oil changer guy or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just got to bring it to the next time I change the oil. And, and and the new ones are big enough to cover the whole headliner of a car, right? Yes. Is that what you said? Yeah. That's what I should do with them while, before Super I give them fan. out. <laughs> oh, God. We lost the show. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you do like support the show, go find us on Patreon. Uh, shout outs. Anybody have anything? Yeah, if if anyone hasn't gotten their patch, uh, email the show and uh, give me your address, and I'll pop one in the mail, including Stephen. Yeah, get a new patch. They're bigger, better, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Anyways, cover the whole roof liner. (laughs) No, they're not that big. (laughs) Anyways, don't listen to me. That being said. Yeah, I have a shout out. I wanted to give a shout out to Richard Lee for always uh, coming on, on and giving us uh, our Facebook review, which we'll put on next week. But also all the help that he's been giving Project Maple Seed lately as well. So I just wanted to give him a huge shout out and say thank you for everything that you do for the gun community as well as the CCFR. So thank you. My <laughs> shout out is to Kyle for sending the goodies. And unfortunately, I did. I got it second, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So when I when I mail the patches out east, I'm just going to send them straight to Kelly because they'll get there sooner, and you guys yeah. will probably meet at some point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll make we'll make sure that we yeah meet up. Yeah, we'll cross paths. Yeah. Adriel, you have a shout out? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, well, I'd like to shout out. Lyle and Bill and everyone involved in the match this weekend for another wonderful sporting clay match. And Northern Metallic uh, sponsored the prize table, so thanks to them as well. Sucks. See, I think likes so it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> My dog's a barking. 
And with that, we're going to sign off. So go check us out on Gun Owners of Canada. Give us a like on Facebook. We are currently at, well, it was updated a while ago, but we're not quite to 3,000 yet. 2959 is the number here. Uh, come subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a review wherever you get your podcast, Facebook. Join the CCFR, and we will see you guys next week. Later, everyone. Night. Night.